All right, so here we are at the latest version of my electronics board. Uh, what you're looking at here are all of the main components that are going to be used uh, in the body, and they are now receiving the appropriate power. I have not connected any data lines. That'll be the next step. Um, but this process here has you know, taught me a lot about how to uh, create my voltage distribution system. So as I mentioned in my last video, um, I've replaced my 24 to 12 volt converter with a 24 to 5 volt converter. So uh, I'm running 24 volts for my Sabertooth, which is the drive motor controller, and the Siren, which is the dome motor, motor controller, as well as my amplifier. For 5 volts, uh, basically everything else. I have the Arduino uh, running on 5 volts. I have my Markduino running on 5 volts. And I have the MP3 trigger running on 5 volts. So one of the first things that I had to do once I brought power to the board was make sure that I had a ground bus uh, distributed uh, around the board. So I've added a bus bar here. I also wired that directly to another one down here. And then I also threw one in the middle here just so that I had easy access. Um, anything that you provide power to needs to connect to a bus. And it doesn't really matter what voltage uh, those things are running at. They can connect to any of the negative bus bars. Uh, but it's just kind of a, a convenient thing uh, to have them you know, easily accessible so you don't have to run wires all over the place. All right, so let's take a look at the 24-volt components and how they're connected. Dimension Engineering is the company that creates the Sabertooth and the Siren, and they recommend against fusing the power connection to both of these devices. Uh, instead, I have them running directly off of the unregulated 24-volt power. So the 24 volts comes into this bus bar here, and I have one power connection going directly to the Sabertooth and one going directly to the Siren. And then both of these are connected to ground. So I also did pick up these little uh, voltage indicators. Um, and so I have one of them that is reading the voltage directly from the unregulated, unregulated 24 volts. And I also have one that is connected to the five volts uh, here. These things are kind of cool. Uh, they're, they're pretty inexpensive, uh, but they do have on the back, there's a little, that large silvery thing in the middle there is a little potentiometer. Um, so out of the box, they, they come, they're not entirely accurate, but I was able to hook that up to a bench power supply, set it for five volts or for 24 volts, and then adjust the dial on the back until it read exactly what uh, what it needed to. All right, so on the five volt side, uh, so we have the voltage converter here, and that takes the input from 24 volts and it outputs five volts regulated right here. Um, this fuse block, fuse block right here, uh, right now is running a five amp fuse for the uh, Arduino, for the MP3 trigger, and for the Markduino. Now, for purposes uh, of right now, um, I'm using this as my dome master. Um, for the actual droid, this is going to be on the other side of the slip ring. But for purposes of being able to test out all of the controls and so forth, um, I have the I will eventually make the Arduino link directly to this. Um, but it would normally be the the dome master. So. With all of this stuff connected, um, I just have power going to it right now. As I said, I don't have any of the of the connections. So the Arduino and the Markduino aren't connected to anything, but I should be able to turn this on. The amplifier should work and the MP3 player does have the sounds uh, loaded onto it. I should be able to manually uh, control that. So let's give that a test and see how it's working. All right, so we've turned everything on and I don't see any blue smoke, which is good. We're getting status indicators on our motor controllers. The amplifier, MP3, Markduino is fluxing and the Arduino looks like it's fine too. Uh, if the voltage indicators, I'm reading just a shade over five volts there and I'm reading a little over 26 volts since the batteries are still pretty well charged. So with the speakers hooked up and my amplifier on, I should be able to 
trigger sounds manually uh, with this little switch on the MP3 player. So, there you go. So, with this now, we know that we've got power that's running to everything. The 24 volt systems are getting 24 volts and the five volt items are getting five volts. Uh, what comes next is going to be to make the data connections uh, between the Arduino and the Markduino, between the Arduino and the motor controllers, and from the Markduino to the MP3 player. So let's uh, see where we get with that. All right, so now I have made the main data connections, uh, and I'll get some close-ups of this uh, to show exactly where everything is connected. But here's essentially how it works. Uh, we have the five volts coming into the Arduino here. Uh, we have a ground connection as well as a data connection here off of uh, pin 16. Both of these feed into the saber tooth. Um, and then the signal wire daisy chains from the saber tooth out of S1 into S1 on the siren, as does the ground. So that handles the data connection to the motor controllers. Uh, additionally, we have pin 18 off of the Arduino that connects to the Dome Master Markduino. And then we have the connection uh, off of the Markduino to the MP3 trigger. And basically what all of this does is it sets up the communication network. And again, I'm running the Shadow uh, MD control system. So uh, a lot of these things, if you're running Padawan or if you're running um, a different control system, your components are going to be different. It's not gonna work the same. Uh, the Arduino, the Shadow code that's on the Arduino is specifically set up to communicate with a saber tooth and a siren. Um, so uh, the difference here is that now with uh, everything being routed through the Markduino, when I turn the system on, I should get the audio startup sound and uh, it will automatically start playing random sounds uh, rather than me having to manually trigger them. So let's see what happens. So I see that now it's it's playing sounds without uh, my manual intervention. Uh, so I have my stealth controllers here. I've marked which one is the primary, and I'll go ahead and pair these. Now I had set this up to pair way back when I did my dome, uh, way back, actually it's been a couple of years now. So I can pair the two. So it looks like they're linked now, and I should have the ability to trigger my own sounds. can change the volume. So everything there seems to be working. The controllers are set up. All that remains now is to connect my uh, dome motor and my drive motors and properly set up and configure the saber tooth and the siren and we should be pretty much good to go. So real quick, here's a chance to look more closely at where everything is connected. So you can see here that I am powering the Arduino with the five volt direct connection. This is the input that bypasses the onboard voltage regulator. Um, next to that is the ground. Uh, we'll have the power and the ground coming in. And then I also have the black wire there, which is the ground that runs to the saber tooth. Over here, we have pin 16, which is the signal wire that goes to the saber tooth and the siren, and 18, which is the serial connection to the Markduino. On the Markduino, we have the serial input 
that is connected to the RX, which is the second pin down. And then you see there is the MP3 pin right next to the two pins that would power the TSA's light in the dome. And then that simply goes over to the MP3 where I'm using the five volts in on the FTDI socket. And then I also have the input on the other side. Let's get a better view. There. Sorry for the shaky camera work. On the Sabertooth side, you've got the signal wire that comes into the S1 input. And then that is daisy chained as is the ground into the corresponding S1 and ground on the siren. So now let's uh, configure the dip switches and get those motors and, uh, and drive units working. All right, so I brought over the drive motors as well as the dome motor, which is still in its bracket. And I've simply connected those to the outputs, the dome motor uh, connects to the outputs on the siren and on the saber tooth, each of the drive motors uh, connects to the pair of pins on either side. If your drive motors go in the wrong direction, you can simply reverse these. There's no actual polarity on these, on these pins. Um, it's whichever way you have it wired. Um, the key thing with, uh, with both of these controllers though, is getting the dip switches correct, which for shadow MD, on the Sabertooth, I have uh, one and two down, and all the rest of them are up or on. And on the Siren, you see, I've got one, two, and four are off, and the other three are on. Um, if you ever are playing around with your Sabertooth, and as soon as you turn everything on, the motors just start going at full blast, your dip switches are probably not set correctly. Uh, there are a lot of tools online and there's lots of threads on astromech that uh, help demystify how those dip switches work and what settings they impact but for shadow md those are the settings uh, that you should have so with that i should be able to turn everything on and none of the motors should start running automatically and i should have control uh, from my from my uh, shadow controllers so let's see how that works All right, so now everything has been turned on, nothing is running, and uh, the right control stick should turn the dome motor. Let's see what happens. There we go. Uh, yeah, I agree. That's pretty cool. And then the left stick should uh, do the drive motors. So going forward, going backwards, and if we go either direction, we've got the tank mixing it is automatically handled by the saber tooth. So I think we're looking pretty good. So what are the next steps? Uh, well, the first thing I need to do is I'm going to need to wire up my slip ring so that I can have these two data lines actually go into the dome master. Uh, and then I'll have a separate, a third data connection, serial connection from the Arduino to the body master. Uh, for now, that's uh, going to be a lower priority. Um, I won't be doing anything with the body master for a while. Um, and then obviously I need to uh, rearrange things if they're going to fit inside R2. Uh, I don't have as much room. This is purely a temporary board. I've got tons of spare holes in there, and I've just been drilling stuff and putting stuff wherever I felt like it made sense. Uh, I'm going to need to put a little bit more thought into the board that's going to be in R2. Um, I will probably make use of both sides of the board, put things like the bus bars and the voltage regulators on the reverse side, and just keeping the components as neatly as I can on the, on the front side. But I'm also going to reorient things a bit so that I have, for instance, easy access to the volume knob if, on the amplifier. Uh, being able to swap out the uh, SD card on the on the on the, on the soundboard, um, and then I also have the challenge of not having a, a rear door on my R2. So I have an idea of uh, a way to have my board be able to pivot uh, inside the droid, so I can uh, have it vertical when he's being used, 
or operated um, and then fold it down a little bit so that I can have better access to fuses and stuff like that. Um, so I'll probably uh, start working on that uh, pretty soon and um, and then hopefully be able to get all of this stuff put back into R2 uh, within the next uh, few weeks and then I'll be able to try driving them around.